Okay, everyone, this one is about the militias. Um, and this is going to be one in a series. There's going to be more after this one, and we'll talk about that at the end. Uh, so this will get us started. First of all, I'm not a liar. Well, I'm in a lawyer. No, I'm in a liar. Um, you should never take my word for anything. You should always do your own research. I provided references to aid you in your research, but I don't know everything. And I'm open to any ideas. Uh, there's four types of people you'll meet in your life. There's the people who try to wake up the slaves. There's the slave masters. There's the people who have no idea they're slaves. And there's the people who like being slaves. Which one are you? Do you really know you for sure? Are you who you think you are? If you can see through the illusion, then you are the solution. If the people don't know their basic rights and freedoms, how can they know when or if their rights and freedoms are being infringed? Never forget the men who started this country were marijuana growing, whiskey drinking, taxi beating rebels who left their beds at night to shoot at the pigs. And that's true. I wonder what they would say about today. All tyranny needs to gain a foothold is for people of good conscience to remain silent. Government is not reason, it's not eloquence, it is force. Like fire, it's a dangerous servant and a fearful master. So this is actually a quote taken from, uh, by John Locke, taken from Two Treatises of Government, Book 2, Chapter 18, Section 199 and 201. Section 199 says, Tyranny is the exercise of power beyond right which no body can have a right to. And this is making use of power anyone has in his hands, not for the good of those who are under it, but for his own private separate advantage. When the governor, however entitled, makes not the law but his will, the rule, and his commands and actions are not directed to the preservation of the properties of his people, but to the satisfaction of his own ambition, revenge, covetousness, or any other irregular passion. Tis a mistake to think this fault only in monarchies. Other forms of government are liable to it as well as that. For wherever that power, the power that is put in any hands for the government of the people and the preservation of their properties is applied to other ends and made use of to impoverish, harass, or subdue them to the arbitrary and irregular commands of those who have it, there it presently becomes tyranny, whether those that use it are one or many. So tyranny, a tyrant can be one person or it can be a group. And I think we got some tyranny going on nowadays. There's no doubt in my mind. And that's taken John Locke, Two Treatises of Government, Book 2, Chapter 18, Section 199, and Section 201. So this is the kind of stuff that our founding fathers were reading. And um, so they understood what tyranny was. They understood it well. And um, we all know what they did. Maybe we need to start thinking about it as well. This is Aristotle, the tyrant who, in order to hold his power, suppress every, suppresses every superiority, does away with good men, forbids education and light, controls every movement of the citizens, and keeping them under a perpetual servitude, wants them to grow accustomed to baseness and cowardice, has his spies everywhere to listen to what is said in the meetings. Gee, that sounds like Google. That sounds like the NSA. That sounds like all sorts of things going on nowadays. Um, spreads dissension and calumny among his the citizens. Well, calumny is lies, and gee, that sounds like the current news media. And impoverishes them, and is obliged to make war in order to keep his subjects occupied, and impose upon them a permanent need of a chief. Gee, that sounds like a Biden. That sounds like Obama. And that sounds like Bushes and Clinton. That sounds like a whole bunch of people. 
Pusic Comitatus, the power or force of the county, the entire population of a county above the age of 15, which a sheriff may summon to his assistance in certain cases as to aid him in keeping the peace in pursuing and arresting felons, etc. And that's, um, looks like an Arkansas case, Williams versus State. Black's Law Dictionary, 6th edition. Causes and necessities for taking up arms, 1775. This is only part of it that's like about four pages. Four pages, at least a couple pages. Anyways, this is part of it. Statutes have been passed extending the courts of admiralty and vice admiralty far beyond their ancient limits for depriving us of the accustomed and estimable privilege of trial by jury in cases affecting both life and property to supersede the course of common law instead thereof to publish in order the use and exercise of the law marshal and for altering fundamentally the form of government established by charter we saw the misery to which this despotism would reduce us that's dictatorship folks the war of independence was fought because the crown had imposed a military dictatorship on the colonies that's exactly what they're saying there folks trial by jury is when the jury conducts the trial. You don't even see that nowadays, and that's guaranteed under the articles, the 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 art the um, um, yeah Article Three of the Constitution and Article Seven and Amendment. This is the Declaration of Independence. The same stuff is going on today that went on that precipitated the War of Independence. He's endeavored to prevent the population of these states for that purpose of obstructing the laws for naturalization of foreigners, refusing to at pass others to encourage their migrations hither. Gee, that sounds like open borders. That sounds like election interference and the raising of conditions of new appropriations of lands. He has obstructed the administration of justice by refusing his assent to laws for establishing judiciary powers. Gee, that sounds like kangaroo courts. He's erected a multitude of new offices and sent hither swarms of officers to harass our people and eat out our substance. Gee, that sounds like military police everywhere, code enforcers. They're everywhere you turn. These are, you know, if you understand what the Declaration of Independence is, it starts off with a preamble of a, like two or three paragraphs, one in the course of human events, it becomes necessary for one people to separate, declare their separation for others, from others. It it um, it uh, a decent respect to the opinions of mankind. Um, they need to explain why. Okay, it's more than that, but that's a summary. And and so it's really a list of grievances. And so these are some of the grievances that were went on, and the stuff in italics is what's happening here today that are similar. He's affected to render the military independent of and superior to the civil power. Gee, that sounds like martial law. That's going on today. You see all these military uniforms, these uh, these bail priest judges that wear military uniforms. He's combined with others to subject us to a jurisdiction foreign to our constitu constitution and unacknowledged by our laws. Gee, that sounds like martial law, giving his assent to their acts of pretended legislation. Well, that's color of law is what they're talking about there. Pretended legislation. That's color of law. Something that looks like law but isn't. For protecting them by a mock trial. Gee, that's not like kangaroo courts, show trials, denials of due process. If there's anywhere that you get your rights violated, it's in the so-called courts. From the punishment of any murders which they should commit on the inhabitants of these states. Well, you know, in these kangaroo courts... They can get anybody off they want to get off, or they can prosecute, they can sell you into slavery, and they do it every day. For transporting us beyond seas to be tried for pretended offenses. Well, that's bringing colors, color of law outside not exceeding 10 miles square. So what's going on is we're, we've got the District of Columbia here, and, and people are too stupid to figure it out. For abolishing the free system of English laws in a neighboring province, uh, establishing therein an arbitrary government, that means dictatorship, folks, an arbitrary government's a dictatorship, and enlarging its boundaries so as to render it at once an example and fit instrument for introducing the same absolute rule, dictatorship, folks, 
bringing the District of Columbia dictatorship outside, not exceeding 10 miles square into these colonies. The Supreme Court has said that, that Congress has plenary, they use the word plenary, that's total power in the District of Columbia for taking away our charters, abolishing our most valuable laws and altering fundamentally the forms of our government. That's military dictatorship, folks, for suspending our own legislatures and de declaring themselves invested in power to legislate for us in all cases whatsoever. Dictatorship. He's abdicated government here by declaring war, by declaring us out of his protection and waging war against us. Mil martial law, military dictatorship under the Trading with the Enemy Act. That's today. He's destroyed the lives of our people. Well, what do you think populating the jails is? Populating the jails with commercial transactions. Texas has a bigger percentage of people in jail than the worst communist dictatorship as a percentage of the population, more than China, more than the Soviet Union. Texas is a police state. And so is everywhere else, actually. You got these military police everywhere. Under the international law of warfare, all parties to a cause must appear by nom de guerre because an alien enemy cannot maintain an action during a war in his own name. A mixed war is one which is made on one side by public authority and the other by mere private persons. Patrick Henry coined the phrase, give me liberty or give me death, after witnessing a man flogged to death for refusing to take a license. Yeah. A license is a contract. You refuse to participate in our contract, we'll just kill you. The corrupt Star Chamber Courts of England required defendants to have counsel. They forced their bar member scum on you every day of the week. The Star Chamber, it's a Star Chamber is what it is. Star Chamber stood for swiftness and arbitrary power. That means dictatorship, folks. It's a limitation on the common law. And that's U.S. Supreme Court, Ferretta versus California. This is George III, Chapter 12, 1778, two years, two years after the Declaration of Independence. Whereas taxation by the Parliament of Great Britain for the purpose of raising revenue in His Majesty's colonies, provinces, and plantations in North America has been found by experience to occasion great uneasiness and disorders. Well, no shit, Batman. That from and after the passing of this act, the King and Parliament of Great Britain will not impose any duty, tax, or assessment, whatever, payable in any of the colonies, provinces, or plantations in North America or the West Indies, except only such duties that may be expedient to impose for the regulation of commerce. That's what I call closing the barn door after the horses get out. Copies of these documents can be found on my, my website and linked under my recent videos. For a complete set of YouTube videos with private information, shares a DVD with over 150 searchable law dictionaries and other books and forms, contact me privately at engineerwin at yahoo.com. Donations to support this work are appreciated. I prefer gold or silver coin, but as an extremely less desirable alternative, I can accept the IOUs, the forced loans, the fake money, the securities. Federal Reserve notes are securities. The uh, Federal Reserve notes, the cryptocurrencies, checks, money orders, etc. Send me an email for particulars. And by the way, cryptocurrencies are not securities. That's already been decided by the courts. The full duty. This is taken from um, Constitutional Homeland Security, Volume 1, The Nation in Arms, by Edwin Vieira, Jr. Okay, he is a... a Really smart guy, actually. He's got four PhDs from Harvard, and uh, he he's a lawyer. Uh, but he got disbarred probably because he was talking about this kind of stuff because the bar, they don't like people doing that kind of stuff. Anyways, yeah. So the full duty to keep and bear arms defined in the Colonial and State Militia Acts applied only to all able-bodied able free males, but never to free women and usually not to male slaves. Adult free women, however, were often required by law to provide arms and ammunition and accoutrements for their minor sons and their male apprentices and servants enrolled in the militia. So in this limited sense, free women too were subject to a duty to keep arms and in times of crisis, armed women who organized themselves into their own military companies were not unknown. So there was companies of armed women 
military companies in colonial days. And the point being is that in colonial days, everybody had to be armed, okay? It was required. If you weren't armed, you were in trouble. This is um, Articles of Confederation, Section 4. No vessels of war shall be kept in time of peace by any state except such number only as shall be deemed necessary by the United States and Congress assembled for the defense of such state or its trade, nor shall any body of forces be kept up by any state in time of peace except such number only as in judgment of the United States and Congress assembled shall be deemed requisite to garrison the forts necessary for the defense of such state. But every state shall always keep up a well-regulated and disciplined militia, sufficiently armed and accoutred, uh, and shall provide and constantly have ready for use in public stores a due number of field pieces and tents and a proper quantity of arms, ammunition, and camp equipage. And so they. this is talking about the militia, okay? This is in the Articles of Confederation. Constitution, Article 1, Section 8, Clauses 15 and 16. Clause 15 says to provide for the calling forth of militia, to execute the laws of the Union, suppress insurrections, and repel invasions. Well, I'd say we're getting invaded right now. To provide for organizing, arming, and disciplining the militia, and for governing such part of them as may be employed in the service of the United States, reserving to the states respectively the appointment of the officers and the authority of training the militia according to the discipline prescribed by Congress. So... Um, Congress was supposed to provide for organizing, arming, and disciplining the militia, and for governing such part of them may be employed in the U.S., but the states had to appoint the officers and the states authority of training them. So this is Article 1, Section 8, Clause 15 and 16. So, uh, um... I'd say the feds are falling short on their job, and you ought to listen to what Edwin Vieira says, because this is a lot of this stuff is taken from Edwin Vieira's book, and we're going to see that here in a minute. A Republican, if you can keep it. A lady asked Dr. Franklin, well, doctor, what have we got, a republic or a monarchy? A republic, replied the doctor, if you can keep it. And well said, you know. Most people don't realize the significance of that if you can keep it, but that is so true. And um, so we're going to talk about some of the Im important or uh, critical things required for a Republican form of government. And this is taken from, again, Edwin Vieira, Jr., Constitutional Homeland Security. He says in his book that the U.S. Department of Homeland Security is really unconstitutional. It's the states that are supposed to take care of that. U.S. Department of Homeland Security only has any effect in D.C. and the territories. Anyways, um, so right here what we have is um, Chapter 1, the pressing need uh, to revitalize the militia of the several states. Um, and a quote from it. Because tyranny is the exercise of power by the authorities for other than the common good, a Republican form of government must always subordinate what authorities may imagine as good for themselves and their clients to what is truly good for we the people as a whole. And in the final analysis, what is truly good for the people as a whole, only the people themselves can judge, because they alone can possess the necessary information and can be relied upon to evaluate it from a proper perspective. Well said. In other words, we the people decide what a Republican form of government is, not the government bureaucrats, and we also decide what tyranny is. And remember what John Locke said. This is Article 4, Section 4. The United States shall guarantee to every state of this union a Republican form of government. This is another quote, page 46 of that same book. Finally, 
The United States shall guarantee to every state in this union a Republican form of government. The Constitution does not expressly define a Republican form, but it also does not and cannot leave that definition to the general government either. To the contrary, the Constitution treats the militia of the several states as perpetual in existence and permanent in authority and character. Therefore, because each of the several states must maintain her own militia, and because every state in this union must be guaranteed a Republican form of government, then simply per force of constitutional logic, a Republican form of government must encompass militia in every state. And ain't that the truth? Think about it. Militia in every state is a minimal requirement for a Republican form of government. We the people. Constitutional uh, Second Amendment, Article 2, an amendment. A well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state. The right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Well, remember, when this in the previous video to the series, in the militia series, I interviewed a um, doctor uh, that, that talked about this word necessary. This word necessary, this is the only place in the Constitution that the word necessary is used. And so um, we need to understand that. And, and necessary means, that means it's absolutely, it's mandatory. Everybody in colonial days had black powder muzzle loaders. The British and the colonists. We need to get that uh, that doctor back, and we're going to have more conversations because he's pretty sharp about these these arms and these accoutrements, and uh, and uh, and uh, he's he's done a lot of study on this stuff, and he's got some real nice equipment. I got to tell you. Anyways, so uh, had black powder muzzle loaders. The British uh, and the colonists. Uh, the British used uh, musket muzzle loaders that were accurate up to 100 yards. That was the normal stuff that was issued for the, to the British regulars. The colonists used Pennsylvania long rifles that were accurate up to two and even 300 yards. They could get a deer two to 300 yards away. The colonies used weapons that were far superior to anything the British used. And so... You know, they say that the people aren't allowed to have military-style weapons. Well, bullshit. Who called out the militia in colonial days? Every colony had statutes that required everybody to be armed and have all the accoutrements. So I tend to wonder, sometimes they were called out, but I think that sometimes they just went out. And they were already organized and ready to go, and, and they just decided to... You know, like some of these battles that went on um, with the British. You know, they didn't. Nobody had to call them out. They just went and went at it. Under the U.S. Constitution, the president can call up the militia. Under the Texas Constitution, the governor can call up the militia. Who runs the militia when they're not being called up? That's we, the people. We, the people, are supposed to be taking care of this. Now, that doesn't mean that we're. You know, we, we're supporting the Constitution. We need to let our local officials know that we're here to support them, and and um, and 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 uh, we support the Constitution, and and that we're we're carrying out our duty. There was Lexington Minutemen, and there was the Culpeper Minutemen. This one is uh, is actually quite famous. Uh, there was, uh, and there was other Minutemen too. Minutemen, think about it, it was the militia. It was people that, if something happened, they went home, they went, got their guns, their arms, not their guns, their arms, and they were ready to go. Culpeper County, Virginia, 1775, the Virginia, the Minutemen of 1775. It looks like Culpeper County, Virginia was established in 1749. And the, the Minutemen were established in 1775. That's kind of interesting, the year before the Declaration of Independence. Martial law is the public law of necessity. Okay, this is what necessity talks about. Necessity calls it forth. Necessity justifies its exercise. And necessity measures the extent and degree to which it may be employed. 
That necessity is no formal, artificial, or legalistic concept, but an actual, factual one. It is the necessity of taking action to safeguard the state against insurrection, riot disorder, or public calamity. That what constitutes necessity is a question of fact in each case. And that's Black's Law Dictionary, 8th edition, page 3093, quoting Frederick B. Weiner, uh, Practical Law and Martial Law. I guess that's book 16, 1940. I'm not sure. Chapter 16, I'm not sure. Anyways, the point being is that we the people, it's necessary. This homeland security crap, it's either either we're going to have a police state, which is what we've got right now, or we're going to have we the people step up and start accepting responsibility and performing our constitutional duty. There's three kinds of martial law. There's full martial law, declaration of martial law is issued, troops put on the streets, used only during wartime, used in a foreign country or were actually invaded by foreign power to put down an armed rebellion. Martial law proper, the law of the armed forces, when a captain tells a private what to do, it's enforced by court martial. Martial law rule, the law of necessity and emergency, allows the domestic use of martial law powers used during peace times, can continue for centuries during a military occupation. And that's Ex Parte Milligan, U.S. Supreme Court. Uh, uh, this is a Civil War era case. I think this might have been the case that Lincoln didn't like the result of it. And that's when he sent troops to the Supreme Court, and, and they've been under... Uh, executive authority ever since, I think. I don't know. I can tell you in the rules it says they're under executive authority. And Rule 45 says that all mandates from the Supreme Court come under authority of the President of the United States. Well, that means it's the Supreme Court's not independent. It means that they're under authority of the President of the United States. Anyways, don't get me going. You're going to get me going here. The Lieber Code, prepared by Francis Lieber, as General Orders 100 uh, for President Lincoln, 24th of April, 1863, instruction for the government of the armies of the United States in the field. Okay, this is not the militia. you got to understand that. Uh, this is the armies of the United States. Of course, the militia has to operate by the law of war, uh, which is international law. But, but again, that's we the people. We have to be the militia. We have to understand, you know, how all of this works. A place, district, or country occupied by an enemy stands a consequence of the occupation under the martial law or invading army or occupying army. Whether any proclamation declaring martial law or any public warning to the inhabitants has been issued or not, martial law is the immediate and direct effect and consequence of occupation or conquest. The presence of a hostile army proclaims its martial law. This is all international law. And that's Article 1 of the Labor Code, General Orders 100. Article 2. Martial law does not cease during the hostile occupation except by special proclamation ordered by the commander-in-chief or by special mention in a treaty of peace concluding the war. When the occupation of a place or territory continues beyond the conclusion of peace, one of the conditions are the same. That's Article 2 of the Lieber Code. Again, if we the people step up and organize our militias, and let the powers that be know that we're this is in support of the Constitution and part of our Republican form of government, I don't see how they can say anything about it. Um, um, you know, really. And make sure that you're following any codes that it has to follow, but I doubt there are many. There's certainly not many. And we're going to talk about this towards the end, about the, uh, the book two. Okay, actually this... The, the book one is the one we're talking about now, but, but there's another book that's uh, 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 Vieira's second book that's 2,700 pages long, and, and it's got all sorts of good stuff in it that explains what we're supposed to do and the authority, where it comes from, and how it all comes together. And we're going to be talking about that in subsequent videos. That we won't be, we're just going to touch on it here before at the end of this video. We'll touch on it a little bit to uh, talk about what the next video is going to be about. Martial law in a hostile country consists in the suspension by the occupying military authority, the criminal and civil law, and of the domestic administration and government in the occupied place or territory, and in the substitution of military force and rule for the same, as well as in the dictation of general laws. That's dictatorship, folks. As far as military necessity requires the suspension, substitution, or dictation. 
The commander of the forces may proclaim that the administration of all civil and penal law shall continue wholly or in part, as in times of peace, unless otherwise ordered by the military authority. This is Article 3 of the Libra Code. Dictatorship is dictatorship, folks. Check out my other videos, Bankster Thieves Playlist, Roman Cult Playlist, Bankrupt Corporate So-Called Governments, Bar Members 1 through 8, Do It Yourself How Not to Volunteer for the Selective Service in the Draft, Martial Law is here, Do It Yourself No Income Tax, Do It Yourself Free Mail, uh, Do It Yourself Kangaroo Courts 1 through 24, uh, Canada Border Pigs Playlist, and Bar Members and Their Satanic Connections Playlist. Necessity is the plea for every infringement of human freedom. It's the argument of tyrants. It's the creed of slaves. Tyrants say, oh, well, this is necessary. Then the slaves say, oh, yeah, it's necessary. Dr. Edwin Vieira suggests that we, the people, can and should organize our own militias. Uh, you need to research your state statutes and make sure your militia is not violating any of your state codes. But I can tell you in Texas, there's next to nothing. It talks about the fact that the militia exists in, in, a, in a bunch of areas. And it says that the governor can call up the militia. And it says that the, the county sheriff can get the militia to come to aid him in, in um, uh, um, preventing uh, prisoners from escaping or something like that. Uh, so there's there's places where the militia talks about the militia, but but it doesn't. There's very little other than that, and so which is correct because the militia is not run by the government really. Uh, we are the government. We are the Republican form of government. The United States Department of Homeland Security is a subsidiary of the Secret Service, which is owned and operated by the Treasury, which is the International Monetary Fund. And I'm going to prove that here in a minute. But first of all, we're going to talk about Dr. Edwin Vieira's book. This is the book right here, the cover. Um, and and it's the guy is brilliant. Um, he's got four PhDs from Harvard. Uh, he uh, I don't know if he's still a practicing lawyer. I know that he was disbarred. I don't know if he ever got back into the bar or not. Um, but but he's 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 pretty sharp. He's got four PhDs from Harvard. That that makes him pretty sharp in my book, anyways. Anyways, um, the um, the doctor that we talked together in uh, in the the previous video. And, and we're going to be talking again. He's the one that introduced me to this. And and so he's got a lot of really nice equipment. I've seen a bunch of it. And and he's pretty brilliant when it comes to this stuff. And he, you know, he's the one that recommended this Dr. Edwin Vieira stuff. And uh, Edwin Vieira has YouTube videos too. I would recommend you watch them and come to your own conclusion. Another one of his books that he wrote is uh, one about being prepared, reluctant preppers. And uh, there's another picture of him. Um, this is another one of his books, and he's currently got How to Dethrone the Imperial Judiciary. Boy, we need that, that's for sure. And that's another one with Dr. Edwin Vieira. So uh, this is a FOIA request I did with the uh, Homeland Security border pigs. And um, it says right here that they're owned by the Secret Service. And the Secret Service, I already knew, was, uh, was owned by the uh, Treasury. And the Treasury is owned by the International Monetary Fund. I already knew that. United States has not had a Treasury since 1921. Look it up. 41 Stat 214, page 654. The United States Department of the Treasury is now the International Monetary Fund, Presidential Documents, Volume Number 29, Number 4, page 113, and 22, Title 22, United States Code 285 to 288, and the International Monetary Fund is a subsidiary of the World Bank, and um, which is the UN. And, um, and that U.S. Code, actually that's District Code of Law for the District of Columbia. And because um, the United States is in the District of Columbia. 
Department of Homeland Security and all its subsidiaries, TSA, FEMA, Customs, Immigration, etc. Okay, so uh, United States Secret Service is a subsidiary of the Treasury Department. So Homeland Security and all its subsidiaries is a sub subsidiary of the U.S. Secret Service. Secret Service is a subsidiary of the Treasury Department. Treasury is, is the International Monetary Fund. Um, the IRS is an agency of the International Monetary Fund, um, and um, and actually that's found in this uh, Senate report number 94-141148, uh, and also a reorganization plan number 26, public law 102-391. Uh, so anyways, so, um, and the Secret Service... Secret Service used to be the Nazi SS and um, uh, is now known, the Nazi SS is now known as the Secret Service. The Nazi SS was Knights of the Cetus Secorum, uh, Knights of the Holy See. It's all coming from the Roman cult, folks. Um, the director of the SS is now the Secret Service in Washington, D.C. And um, it's all coming from the Roman cult. The UN, through the International Monetary Fund, issues Social Security numbers. The Department of the Treasury issues the SS5, not the Social Security Administration. The Department of the Treasury is the International Monetary Fund. The new SS5 forms do not state who or what publishes them. The early SS5 forms state that where they were Department of Treasury forms. All Social Security checks come directly from the IMF and the UN. It says it on the front of the check. That's why they do the electronic deposits. They don't want you figuring this stuff out. Isn't it amazing how all these terror alerts start coming out when there are DHS funding bills before Congress? Isn't that amazing? Some people saying the United Nations is going to invade. They've already invaded. Hello? The UN pigs are already here and have been for decades. The only jurisdiction... Uh, they only have jurisdiction in the District of Columbia. They're busy bringing illegals across the border to manipulate the elections. Uh, they're busy creating terrorists so they can shed innocent blood for their Roman cult, God Baal. And they're making business for themselves. If we want homeland security, we need to form our own militias and create our own homeland security. We, the people, need to step up and start taking care of business. When did these guys become these guys? Homeland Security are the terrorists. The U.S. Homeland Security. U.S. Homeland Security are the terrorists. When did this become this? And then we told them that the spying is supposed to keep them safe. <laughs> if you want total security, go to prison. There you're fed, clothed, given medical care, and so on. The only thing lacking is freedom. That awkward moment when you realize the same government that is supposed to protect us from the terrorists is the terrorist. Can you spot the terrorists? Terrorism is the noun. The use of violence and intimidation in the pursuit of political aims. Time to wake up, folks. Terrorism. A system of government that seeks to rule by intimidation. To those who think that a police state can never happen in America, wake up! Do you feel safe? If we can't rape you, the terrorists win. Homeland Security, they're the terrorists. TSA choice, molestation, molestation, or radiation. Love the TSA Body Cavity Explorer Corps. We're here for you. Think of us as your position. Your health and safety is our concern. TSA cavity searches coming sooner than you think because profiling would offend the terrorists. Keep telling yourself that you're free. Warning, 
This is the standing army you were told not to tolerate. If you think this is for your protection, you clearly have no idea what's going on. Pull over. Your tail light is out. The Constitution says the government shall have power to call forth the militia. This is in Texas, Article 4, Section 7. Uh, members of the militia are exempt from holding more than one public office under Article 16, Section 40 of the Texas Constitution, uh, Texas Code of Criminal Procedure, military aid and executing process. Uh, the the uh, the um, I'm not sure if that's the uh, county sheriff. I think that is can order any military company of volunteers or militia company from another county. Texas Code of Criminal Procedure, military aid in suppressing riots. Um, aid of military and militia companies is called. This is all in Texas and you can, you can consider that every state is probably gonna have similar stuff. The sheriff, when he supposes there'll be necessity, orders such citizens of his county or request any military or militia company to aid in preventing the rescue of a prisoner. Uh, reserve militia means persons liable to serve but not serving in the state military forces. Uh, state militia means the state military forces and the reserve militia. State military forces means the Texas National Guard, the Texas State Guard, and any other act of militia or military force authorized under state law. Organized, organized under state law. A passport is a written document given to a person or persons by a commander of belligerent forces authorizing him or them to travel unmolested within the district occupied by his troops. Passports are issued by the State Department or similar office in other countries to diplomatic agents and others entering or traveling in foreign countries, which are the same general character as those issued during war. The latter should, when practical, have the photo, uh, photograph of the bearer attached. And that's taken from the Rules of Land Warfare, 1914 edition, Passport Safe Conduct, Safeguards and Cartels, Chapter 7, Section 6, Section 4, Article 276, page 100. It is the duty of the patriot to protect his country from its government. Thomas Paine. Any society that would give up a little liberty to gain a little security will deserve neither and lose both. That's what we've done, folks. We need to step up and become the homeland security. But if the watchmen see the sword come and blow not the trumpet and the people be not warned, if the sword come and take any person from among them, he is taken in his iniquity. But his blood will I require at the watchman's hands. Either you're part of the problem or you're part of the solution. You are now a watchman. Circulate this video far and wide. Government is not the solution to our problem. Government is the problem. The greatest danger to American freedom is a government that ignores the Constitution. And they're only ignoring it because we're letting them get away with it. When plunder becomes a way of life for a group of men in a society over the course of time, they create for themselves a legal system that authorizes it and a moral cord code that glorifies it. Bastiat, in his book, the law. Two enemies of the people are criminals and government. So let us tie down the second, the government, with the chains of the Constitution so the second, the government, does not become the legalized version of the first criminals. That's exactly what's going on today. None are more hopelessly enslaved than those who falsely believe they are free. If a law is unjust, a man is not only a right to disobey it, he is obligated to do so. There's Jefferson's seal. Rebellion to tyrants is obedience to God. Think about it. That also means that obedience to tyrants is rebellion to God. Think about it. 
At common law, only gold and silver were legal tender. If you want common law, it requires honest measures. And that's uh, quoted, that's a uh, 1820 court case, but they're quoting book two of the Institutes and the Laws of England. That's like in the 1500s. That's Coke in the 1500s. There is a distinction between a debt discharged and one paid. When discharged, the debt still exists, though divested of its character as a legal obligation during the operation of the discharge. <laughs> and these bar members lay awake at night dreaming this stuff up. Discharge falls under the law of nations, which is international law. My contact information, my blog is sovereigntyinternational.wordpress.com. My website is sovereigntyinternational.fyi. My email address is engineerwin at yahoo.com. My YouTube profile, Sovereign Living. My Facebook community page, I deleted it due to censorship on the part of Facebook. My private group called Sovereignty International is being deleted. Uh, matter of fact, I haven't been to Facebook in months, maybe even years. I have no interest in going there. All it is is the NSA collecting information on people. So uh, I delete that group off of there, except that Facebook would keep making money off of it. I need to ban everybody off of it, and I need to go on the group, and there's 17,000 people. It would take me hours and hours and hours to delete everybody off of there, to ban them off of there. Freelist.org. My private group called Administrating Your Public Servants. I've also got a private group at Google called Administrating Your Public Servants. Follow me on Steam at Sovereignty International. Follow me on BitChute at Sovereignty International. And I now have a subscription or an exclusive um, channel on HowTube.com where I have a bunch of exclusive videos. And uh, so any video that uh, I can upload to YouTube is going to get uploaded there. And, and you can buy a subscription there. What is proclaiming martial law is no law at all, but for merely for the sake of public safety and circumstances agree emergency, setting aside all law and acting under military power. And that's uh, 8 Attorney General's Opinion, February 3rd, 1857. I have exclusive content available on howtube.com. The, uh, the subscriptions cost $9.99 a month for videos plus unlimited email consultations. But I'm not a liar. Well, I'm in an attorney. No, I'm in a liar. But I can tell you what I would do under certain circumstances and where to find the forms. The only power that these New World Order Satanists have over us is through fraud and deception. And my agenda is to expose it for all our benefit. Uh, but I cannot fight all the battles. I need other people knowing the law the proper arguments, and what to do. Some of my exclusive content, and I need to, Patreon went and deleted my channel, so I need to get rid of that. There we go. Arlington Private Information Share, Land D Training, Estoppel Certificates Training, Foreclosure Estoppel Certificates Training, uh, corporate denial training, toll road notice and demand training, invoice training, notice avoid judgment training, revocation signature training, third party witness training, federal habeas corpus training. Revocation of voter registration, criminal complaint training, lawsuit training. There's one video up about that. There's going to be more. Other training, there's going to be more criminal complaint training requests. I recently uploaded a video about the Bedford mayor resigning because I filed multiple criminal complaints against him and the city council. And um, so I think that um, I'm going to upload a video about that uh, on how I did those criminal complaints because, again, we do have a lot of good public servants. They're not all a bunch of crooks. And uh, and so you just need to complain and you need to do it in the right way. And they'll look into it and, you know, it rolls downhill, right? <laughs> Other training requests, if anybody has requests, if it's something I haven't already done or something I can do. I need to do some more lawsuit training and uh, the criminal complaint training uh, videos. Um, but, you know, that's going to be a project. Northeast private information share videos, all forms, files, and other instructions are available for free, uh, linked on my on my videos and on my website. Okay, there's a a 
free files link, and it's got a bunch of files in there. All exclusive content available on HowTube.com, and you can buy a subscription there. Now, all of my videos, I make a PDF. Like, there's even going to be a PDF of this video, and it will be either on my website, on those free files, uh, or it'll be a link. I'll upload it to Google Docs, and there'll be a link to it in uh, um, at the in the show notes at the bottom of the video. Um, this video is going to be uploaded to YouTube. I'm, I'm basically uploading videos to YouTube, even though they've completely demonetized me uh, with the objective of getting a few people to subscribe to my HowTube uh, videos and uh, uh, to hopefully make up for what YouTube has not given me. And, and YouTube wants to get sued, so I'm going to have to accomplish that. Uh, but I got, it's on my list of to-dos. Uh, anyways, all exclusive content will be available on HowTube.com. You can buy a subscription there. Um, and 10 bucks a month, I mean, that's that's not much. And uh, so most people can afford that. And, and I'll be uploading regular videos there to make sure that you're getting something, some value for your money. Um, a bankruptcy and military occupation after concessions to the Pope precipitated the Magna Carta. A bankruptcy and military occupation in colonial days precipitated the War of Independence. A bankruptcy in 1932 and military occupation today is precipitating what is happening now. It's all coming from the Roman cult. They replaced the true Article 13th Amendment with the current 13th Amendment. They allowed bar members to infiltrate. 70 to 90% of members in Congress and the legislature are bar members. Bar members are foreign agents of the Roman cult enforcing the martial law. British accredited regency. That's what bar stands for. Regency is an office or jurisdiction of a regent or body of regents. A government or authority by regents. So we have, it's all coming from the District of Columbia. There's a National Bar Foundation. That's in the District of Columbia. Regent, a person who exercised the ruling power in a kingdom during the minority, absent, or other disability of the sovereign. A government or a governor or ruler. And that's Black's Law Dictionary, 8th edition. All bar members operate in a zip code. That's the District of Columbia. We, the people, have abdicated our responsibility to these bar members. You know, you've seen these pictures. There's pictures I've seen, and I don't have one here, and I was just thinking of this. The hanging tree, you know, which is a big, huge tree, and there's probably 30 people hanging underneath that thing. And I think that we're going to see that coming up pretty soon. And a bunch of these bar members, I'm not saying all bar members are bad. That, that, um, that, um, Vieira, okay, I don't know if he's still a bar member. Uh, but so there are some bar members that are good, honorable people. Some, what happens usually is they get disbarred <laughs> because the bar doesn't want good and honorable people being in there. And so, uh, um, you know, but this Edmund Vieira, that, that wrote this book that we're talking about here. He's he's a good guy. I think he is. And um, and he's trying for, he wants good government. Ends of court. There are certain private unincorporated associations in the nature of collegiate houses located in London and invested with the exclusive privilege of calling men to the bar. If any citizen of the United States shall accept, claim, receive or retain any title of nobility or honor or shall without the consent of Congress accept and retain any present pension office or emolument of any kind whatever from any emperor, king, prince, or foreign power. Okay, so they have uh, bar members received an honor. It's a title of nobility and it's an honor. It's Esquire is a title of nobility and it's an honor from a foreign power, the Roman cult. Such persons shall cease to be a citizen of the United States and shall be incapable of holding any office of trust or profit under them or either of them. Under them is the federal government, either of them is the state government. And that's the true Article 13 and Amendment. 
yielding and paying yearly to us, our heirs and successors, for the same, the yearly rent of 20 marks of lawful money in England at the Feast of All Saints, yearly forever. The first payment thereof to beginning made on the Feast of All Saints, which shall be the, in the year of our Lord, 1,665, and also the fourth part of all gold and silver ore, which happens within the limits aforesaid, shall from time to time happen to be found. And that's the Carolina Charter, 1663. And I don't know if anybody has seen the map of the Carolina Charter. That's North and South Carolina. And it goes coast to coast. So parts of California is in the Carolina Charter. Whereas taxation by the Parliament of Great Britain for the purpose of raising revenue in His Majesty's colonies, provinces, or plantations in North America, I think I read this already once, has been found by experience to great occasion great uneasiness and disorders. Well, no shit, Batman, that from and after the passing of this act, the King and Parliament of Great Britain will not impose any duty, tax, assessment, whatever, payable in any of the colonies, provinces, or plantations in North America or the West Indies, except only such duties as it may be expedient to impose for the regulation of commerce. And that's George III, chapter 12, 1778, two years after the war, of, after the Declaration of Independence. Martial law affects chiefly the police and the collection of public revenue and taxes, whether imposed by the expelled government or by the invader refers mainly to the support and efficiency of the army, its safety, and the safety of its operations. That's Article 10 of the Libra Code. Think about it. That's why they want you be safe. Don't forget, be safe. We're worried about your safety. Papers, please. They're bringing the District of Columbia outside of 10 miles square. Taxes cause the War of Independence. If they can tax you, then you are their slave. You're forced to work for them for nothing. It's becoming more and more difficult to be free. Felonies mean nothing unless they have a political agenda. It's all found in the Declaration of Independence. These are all grievances. There's two ways to conquer and enslave a nation. One is by sword, the other is by debt. One of the grievances in the Declaration of Independence is imposing taxes on us without our consent. You have to agree. That's why they assault you with their commerce. On Christmas Eve, 24th of December, 1913, in the middle of the night, Congress passed the Federal Reserve Act, setting up the scenario for the next ba bankruptcy. It took less than 20 years for the Federal Reserve banksters to set up the next bankruptcy. Since so March 9th, 1933, so that's 19 years and three months. The United States has been in a state of declared national emergency. Under the powers delegated by these statutes, the president may seize property, organize and control the means of production, seize commodities, assign military forces abroad, institute martial law, seize and control all transportation and communication, regulate the operation of private enterprise, restrict travel, and in a plethora of particular ways, control the lives of all American citizens, a majority of the people of the United States have lived all their lives under emergency rule. For 40 years, freedoms and governmental procedures guaranteed by the Constitution have in varying degrees been abridged by laws brought into force by states of national emergency. And that's U.S. Senate Report Number 93-549, dated November 19, 1973. You think anything's changed? Absolutely not. And on the same day, March 9th, 1933, it's an established fact that the United States federal government's been dissolved by the Emergency Banking Act, March 9th, 1933, 48 Stat 1, Public Law 89-719, declared by President Roosevelt being bankrupt and insolvent. H.J.R. 192, 73rd Congress, in session June 5th, 1933, Joint resolution to suspend the gold standard and abrogate the gold clause, dissolve the sovereign authority of the United States and the official capacities of all United States governmental offices, officers, and departments. And is further evidence that the United States federal government exists today in name only. U.S. Congressional Record, March 17, 1993. Do you think anything's changed? Absolutely not. 
Judge wears a military uniform. It's a military dictatorship, folks. And it's all coming from the District of Columbia, which is owned and operated by the Roman cult. Judge sits there and plays stupid. If you fail to follow some obscure rule or procedure, they sell you into slavery. Everything they do is a fraud and a nullity. If we were Christians, we'd be hanging them from the trees. In the Bible, in Deuteronomy, it says that you sell anybody into slavery, you get to be put to death. Most people in America, they say they're Christian and they have no idea. Judge works for the state, prosecutor works for the state, police or witness works for the state. The vast majorities of the disputes that the police initiate on behalf of their employer are also adjudicated by their employer, where the plaintiff, the judge, the antagonist, the police, and the only witness, also the police, all represent the same party. And since no corpus delecti, mens rea or ax reus can be produced, doesn't technically qualify to be heard according to its own laws. The state, therefore, is indistinguishable from a criminal cartel. Neither slavery nor involuntary servitude except as punishment for a crime. This is the current so-called 13th Amendment. Except as punishment for a crime uh, whereof the party shall have been duly convicted shall exist within the United States or any place subject to their jurisdiction. He, the prisoner, has as a consequence of his crime not only forfeited his liberty but all his personal rights except those which the law and its humanity affords him. He is for the time being a slave of the state. Everyone in prisoner in prison was sold into slavery. And we call ourselves Christians? My history of the Jesuits is not eloquently written, but it is supported by unquestionable authorities and is very particular and very horrible. There, the Jesuit order's restoration in 1814 by Pope Pius VII is indeed a step towards darkness, cruelty, despotism, and death despotism's dictatorship. I do not like the appearance of the Jesuits, as though as a body of men who merited eternal damnation on earth and in hell, it is the society of Ignatius de Loyola. And that's John Adams, pres second president of the United States. Within 20 years, this country is going to rule the world. Kings and emperors will soon pass away, and the democracy of the United States will take their place. When the United States rules the world, the Catholic Church will rule the world. Nothing can stand against the Church. Roman Catholic Archbishop James E. Quigley, Chicago Daily Tribune, May 5, 1903. Roman Conquest, 24th of September, 2015. Now that red text is really hard to read, so I went and um, I have it on the next slide. So we'll start right here. It's pointing at this Roman Achaea military staff right here. It says Roman Achaea military staff carried in battle by all Roman commands, planted on all conquered nations. So that's this text right here pointing at this staff right here. Then this text right here is pointing at Biden. Devout Roman Catholic, honorary degree from Jesuit Scranton University. Right here, and pointing at Biden. That's Biden. And then this text here is pointing at these Roman fascists. Roman bundle of rods bound to a weapon symbolizing subservient under the rule of a single man. Dictatorship. And there's the dictator, the Jesuit. The Satanists. And then this one right here is pointing at the speaker at that time, Boner or Beaner or whatever his name was. Devout Roman Catholic, trained by Jesuits, installed the first Jesuit chaplain to the house. Congress is owned and operated by the Roman cult. On behalf of the Roman cult, Congress has been imposing a military dictatorship on the District of Columbia. And... And, and basically, um, because most people don't have a clue, any place with a zip code is, is in the District of Columbia. Why do you think Pelosi gets up there and says, we can't read this bill until after we pass it? Here the pimp is with Obama, and they're all laughing and having a good time. And he's not too happy with Trump, is he? I think it's because he knows justice is coming. 
Um, he's the pimp wears the white to make him seem like he's so pure. Well, he's a Satanist. That's Satan himself. Uh, um, basically, his 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 authority on this planet. If a man be found stealing any of his brethren of the children of Israel, maketh merchandise of him, or selleth him, then that thief shall die. Thou shalt put evil away from among you. You know, in Deuteronomy chapter 28, it's got about from uh, verse like 15 to verse 68, it's a list of curses that are on a people that do not honor God's law. And those curses, many of those curses are happening on us right now. And so we need to repent. Is the USA Christian? We need to repent. Mark Passio, a former Satanist priest, says that 90% of Americans are practicing Satanists. We're reaping the curses found in Deuteronomy chapter 28, 15 to 68. It's time to repent, folks. And having our own militia is a good start. Reserve militia in this chapter, this is Texas Government Code 431.001. Reserve militia means persons liable to serve but not serving in the state military forces, so we're not in the reserve militia. State militia means the state military forces and the reserve militia. And state military forces means the Texas National Guard, the Texas State Guard, and any other act of militia or military force organized under state law. So, again... We can be part of the a, a militia, county militia. If you read in the other codes, it talks about a county militia. The militia cannot be called up by anyone to suppress insurrections or repel invasions if they're not organized and ready to be called up. They need to be organized and ready to be called up. We will either have our constitutional homeland security or a police state. Which one do you wish? U.S. homeland security is what we currently have right now, and it's a police state. The choice is ours. Right now, we have a police state. Currently, a bigger percentage of the Texas population is incarcerated than the worst dictatorships in the Soviet Union or communist China. This is uh, Edwin Vieira's second book. Part two, the sword and sovereignty. Constitutional Homeland Security, volume two, the constitutional principles of the militia of the several states. You know, I was looking through the table of contents. This is a 2,700 page book and chapter 42. The militia of the several states are vested with the authority and responsibility to, and therefore must, provide every type of protection, whether political, economic, or social in character, that may be, quote, necessary to the security of a free state, unquote, in every state, for the United States as, whole, as a whole, and ultimately for we the people, under whatever form of government we may establish. And I think, you know, so that's what we're going to be talking about in the next video. And uh, so that's about the end of this video. We're going to be talking about that stuff in the next one. And so uh, this ought to get you going. Um, we, the people, need to be organizing our own militias. We need to be um, preparing. There's, we're going to be, we're in for some really difficult times. We're, we're getting the curses that, that are found In Deuteronomy 28, 15 to 16, I would suggest you read them because you'll see a lot of those curses are happening. And and if we repent, we can put a stop to it. You know, it's up to us. We need to uh, repent. Anyways, thanks for watching. That's the end of this video. Let's uh, look forward to the next one. Thanks for watching.